Psalm chapter 75 to the chief musician Al Tashadim, which they say is a meaning mean destroy not. A song or song of Asaph. Now, chapter 73, we were looking at Asaph, the man that held the responsibility of the music and the instruments before David at the tabernacle. And you'll find him listed in the Chronicles. And then we looked at chapter 74 last night, and it looks like the there are some that say this is Asaph as a prophet in David's time showing us the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple by the Babylonians. And then there's the aspect that this is an Asaph that was during the time of Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel that live to see the destruction we've got another song of this asap i'm going to say neither nor after hearing about there could be an asap of psalm 74 that was there after i can't say it is and i can't say it's not but here's another asap and i'm going to assume that this is the asap of David, unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Now, here's an old God that, that you're not destruction. You're addressing God. O God, do we give thanks? We ought to give thanks. Do we give thanks? He's making it as a statement. O God, do we give thanks? far as a modern world today of Christianity might it would be do we give thanks who do we thank when we get something do we even thank unto thee do we give thanks a oh, verily verily it is so important Asaph repeated it and that's where it's important when it's been repeated Oh, the birthday of Jesus, the birth. It's not when you mention the scriptures, but once. We don't have a date. And yet we have the death, burial, and resurrection. Four times of the eyewitness accounts of Jesus Christ dying, suffering, being buried, and arose again the third day and the third night, according to the scriptures. We got recorded four times. And yet in the Bible, we got once the word Easter. How many times is the word Passover? How many times is the word on the first day of the week? And how many times do you see the word Sunday? We got to get back to the King James English language. For that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. The name of Jehovah and the name of Jesus Christ. Today, there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. When I shall call, when I shall receive, excuse me, the congregation, that's God speaking, I will judge uprightly. That's God speaking about judgment. And again, that is lacking from the modern church today. God will take care of us. God is hungry, dory. God will ever. God, God hates to sin and loves the sinner. The Christian will stand at the judgment seat of Christ and will be judged on our work. The Old Testament saints and those that are lost go to the great white throne judgment. Are they all lost? No. The Bible says the books were open. They were judged according to their works. And if their name was found written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they got to go in life eternal. And if their name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, they go off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Judgment's coming, saved or lost. The earth 
and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. That's the first time that word shows up. Mother Earth dissolves. Peter says it, it murks with a, with a firm element of fire and heat. Another place in scripture say it just the heavens and the earth just wrap up like an old scroll. This earth is going bye-bye one day. And the Bible says we're going to get a new earth, new heavens, and new Jerusalem. Glory to God. I bear up the pillars of it, God says. There's pillars. There, throughout the whole Bible, there's, there's something with pillars with the earth. Selah. Well, that's a musical rest. That's also within a couple verses, an, an advent. Well, where is the advent? Look at verse 2, judgment. Jesus Christ comes back, second advent, and judges the, the, the goat nations. I said, back to Asaph speaking, I love this advice. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. That's great advice. Problem is, they don't listen. We tell people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And they won't listen. And the fool that has said in his heart that there is no God repeated twice in the Psalms. Today we went to the went to the farmer's market. Very few people and the people have been there over and over and over. They won't turn to God. They'll just mock and laugh and try to prevent the gospel. And to the wicked, lift not up thy horn. Now, a horn in the Bible is a symbol of strength. Many animals that have a horn or antlers use it for battle. Lift not up your horn on high. Now, with pride. Look how good I am. Look how great a nation is. Look how wonderful. I'm number one. He said, don't say that. Don't do that. Speak not with a stiff neck. Now that is great medical advice. I don't know what, if he knows what he's saying there. Saying, listen, if you're going to give a lecture, you're going to preach. You're going to teach. Relax your throat. Relax for singing and preaching and teaching. Because I know of men personally who have preaching and singing they have ruined their voice and all because they spoke with a stiff they didn't and they have come to me afterwards and talked to me yeah, that by that verse in the bible that's 100% correct for promotion I want to get a promotion. There's only two places that word promotion shows up in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35. That place in here. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35. Promotion. The wise shall inherit glory. Those are we just read about the fool. Now we're reading about the wise. Who's wise? Those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who have done what God told them to do in the Old Testament. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. Look at how that matches what Asaph says in Psalm 75. Maybe Solomon got that from Asaph. Because it would have been around that time if that's the Asaph of David. Shame. Promotion of fool. Let's see. Study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. And you don't correctly divide, you don't correctly have the right Bible, you're going to be made ashamed and you're going to be a fool. And you're not going to be promoted by God. You may be promoted by the world. You may have billions and gazillions of, of followers and thousands of people in your church building, but we don't rightly divide. 
Because watch this promotion back in Psalms. For promotion cometh neither, neither, not, from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God. What happened to north? Where's north? God's in the north. And every compass you have of my jury, they will point to God by going north. And some have a little red indicator for the blood. Some have a little blue indicator for heavenly. Some even have a silver indicator being redeemed by the blood. Where is God? He's in the north. Find where north is and point. Where am I going to go when the rapture happens? I'm going to go north. I'm sorry, you southerners. You're going to be northerners one day. You're going to go right through the north. To the clouds. God is the one that promoted. Well, I do a hard work for my employer. You know, I brown nose my employer. And I, I he'll just... Ask God. My job gave me a promotion. My boss gave me the promotion. What happened to God? But God is the judge. Go ahead. Tell him. Judge not easy to be judged. Tell him that. I bet you some will. I bet you there will be people at the great white throne judgment that will say that to God. He's going to judge all, saved and lost. Old Testament and New Testament. And tribulation folks. And millennial folks. God will judge every human being going back to Adam. And God will judge every fallen angel. And given us the power of the judgment of the angels that Paul says. Paul says, know ye not that we shall judge the angels? God will judge the Christian right to judge the fallen angel. And then he'll judge Lucifer, the Antichrist, and the false prophet into the lake of fire. He, God, put it down one and set us up another. I had a guy the other day tell me, Well, I think that Pelosi is going to destroy America. And what if that's what God wants to do? And you're going to try to stop it by voting. What if by the person that you hate and don't like, what if God's going to approve the country like that? Well, I don't like this person. What if he got to the office of the presidency and he received the Lord Jesus Christ as his savior and he took a stand that no other president ever took a stand and said, we're going to live for Christ. We're going to do for Christ. We're going to shut the media down of all the nonsense and fake news. They're only going to report the news now. We're going to open up the gates to Jesus Christ. We're going to put Jesus Christ back in the school. You know, all the things that the aborted babies could have been, but they've been killed. All that this country could have been, you voted against them. That's why I don't vote. I may do something against God. I do do what the Bible tells me to do. Before, oh, you don't vote? I go out and tell people about Jesus Christ. I got a chapter and verse in many places where the Bible tells me to go preach the gospel. I can't find anywhere in the scriptures, and neither can you, go out and vote. You may go vote for the devil's candidate and not God's candidate. Because God sees tomorrow. You haven't seen tomorrow. And what God, what God casts down and what God sets up. For in the hand of the Lord, now this is an important verse, get off the politics. There's a cup. And the wine is red. Red wine. It is full of mixture. That's the first time that word shows up. What's that mixture? Adultery, fornication, tobacco, 
sex, cussing, cursing, lying, swearing, deceiving, every known sin, bad or wicked or good, all sin is that mixture. I'll show you in a moment. All the sins of mankind is in that cup. And he pours it out of the same, same cup. But the dregs, that's the first time that word shows up. That is what's at the bottom, the scum that settles to the bottom. Thereof. All the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. Be not deceived, God's not marked whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Now that verse, 75 verse 8, will explain to you another verse in the Bible that scholars lie about. Matthew 26, 39. Matthew 26, 39. I'll read it to you, and I will tell you what scholars say, and I'll tell you they're full of baloney. Matthew 26, 39. What dares you to say they call them baloney? Bible, rightly dividing, studying to show myself approved unto God, and let them be ashamed. Verse 39, chapter 26 of Matthew. And he, Jesus, went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Father, oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And scholars will say, that is the death of Jesus. Jesus asked God, could I not die? That ain't it. That's a lie. Liar, liar, gonna burn in fire. I said that. That cup that Jesus is talking about is the same cup that we found in uh, Psalm 75. It's the same cup that we find throughout the Bible. Judgment. This cup is mixture of all the sins in the world. That cup that was to be poured upon Jesus was all the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin. Singular. Singular. Notice that. Take away the sin, singular, of the whole world. What's that? All the sin put into a mixture. There it is. When Jesus Christ died on that cross, he died for sodomites. He died for cookie stealers. He died for people who tell a lie. He, di he died for the fornicators. He died for the adulterers. He died for the prostitute. He died for the murderer. He died for all the sins of all people. Even if you didn't do that sin, he died for that sin that somebody did, that you didn't do. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you put your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ, your sins are not coming back to you. Why? Because he took the sin. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now what happens if you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior? Chapter 75, verse 6. If you reject Jesus Christ, for in the hand of the Lord, I would say Jesus, there's a cup, and the wine is red, matches the color of blood. So what color wine goes good with sin? Red. The Bible speaks much about red wine. It is full of mixture, again, of all the sins, all the sins. And he, God, pours it out the same. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin. No matter what's in that cup, whatever, it's the same. It's sin. S-I-N. But the, but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall bring them out and drink them. What is that? That's people who reject Jesus Christ. Say, so what are you talking about? Jesus Christ 
On April, 1, April 21st, 1987, I received Jesus Christ as my, sa my Savior. Jesus Christ died on that cross and all my sins that I have ever done, all the sins I did that day, April 21st, and all the future sins I will do was poured upon Jesus Christ on that cross for me. And whatever date you were saved, Whatever sins you've done before that day, whatever sins you did on that day, and now all the sins you've done after that day of your new birth, all those were put into one cup, and Jesus Christ bared that cup. That's what Jesus Christ told the Father. You know what Jesus Christ told the Father? I'm not afraid to die. Is it? That wasn't it. Father? Yes, son? You don't know how wicked this is. Father, you're holy. Father, you've never sinned. Father, we never sinned together. At all. We can't even tell a, a lie, Father. Yes, sir. Do you know how filthy these sins are? No, I don't. Father, if I can, yes, son. Those sins, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to partake of those sins on the cross. I'm being very careful what I say here. And I'm not saying Jesus Christ became a sinner, but he took upon our sin. And Jesus looked at the sins of the world and said, Father, <laughs> this is not holy. Son, you got to go. I, I know. I wish I did not have to take upon it. Listen, think about Write down on a paper. I don't know how long that paper is. I don't know how much you would number it. But write down every single sin from Adam to the last human being that will be on this earth. And you put it all together in one piece of paper. And you crumple those papers up. Probably be paper. You crumple it all up. And all those sins that I have done. And all those sins that I have never done. And all the trillions, I don't know how many humans. Behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Singular. And Jesus Christ told his Holy Father, You don't have any idea what I am going about to do, Father. Now what's chapter 75 verse 8 explain? If you will not allow Jesus to take your cups of sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, you're going to do it. And you don't need to do it because you're it's already been paid. The cup has already been taken. And you're going to stand at the great white throne judgment and Christ is going to hand you that cup like God handed it to him. Take that to hell with you. Take it to the lake of fire. I paid for your sins upon Calvary's cross. You heard him preach it. You saw the gospel. Whatever how you heard the gospel. You rejected me. You want to pay for your own sin? Because you rejected me? I'll tell you how you pay for your own sin. You burn in the lake of fire for all eternity. Now there's no more time. Here's your cup. Enjoy it. There it is. Go ahead. Drink it. That's an awful statement to make. To realize our loved ones and people we don't even know. And people we do know. That when they're told to depart from me, workers of iniquity. Salvation was wrought through Jesus Christ. And they will pay for their own sin that Jesus paid for by going to hell and shedding God's blood through his veins. And the whole time is they needed not. That's why the Bible calls them foolish. It'd be like this. Let me say this. And this illustration I've heard before about salvation. I go to the bank. I am unable, but I go to the bank and I give the bank a check 
with my signature. And it's a good check. It wouldn't be, but, but I'm just saying for the, for the illustration. I hand the bank a check with my signature. And this check will pay for all your bills, all your gas, whatever you want. It will pay for everything till you die. And all you got to do is you got to go down to the bank. You got to go up to the teller, present your ID, who you are, and sign the back of that check. And you tell the teller or me or whoever that told you about the Well, th there's a better way to pay my bills. I've got a job. I can do it. And you can't do it. Jesus Christ said, if you put your faith in me, I will cleanse you. I will forgive you. I will take all your sin as far as the east from the west. Did you see that? But if you don't want Jesus, the, the, the three people that mocked us today at the farmer's market, and been, if they don't ever call upon Jesus Christ, Jesus is going to look at them and say, I, I, right now, right now, today, I sent that guy for you for six years. That guy told you how to get saved. That guy told you of his, told him today of my own personal testimony. You want to do it yourself? You want to pay for your sins yourself? Shut up. I'm talking to you. Here's your cup. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. Enjoy. I never knew you. That's where you that's why you go to hell. That's why you go into the lake of fire. You pay for your own sins. For Jesus Christ, you know what the payment was? Three days and three nights. I'm saved, signed, sealed, delivered. I'm a child of God. Three days and three nights, according to the scriptures. That's the good news. That's the gospel. You want to do it yourself? All eternity. Whatever time you spend in hell while the earth is here, and then all eternity, you pay for your own sins. You're not ever going to get out. It's your choice. Either have Jesus do it or you can do it. But I declare forever. Oh, see that statement? A semicolon. It's really, a, a, it's the end of the sentence. All right. You're going to go, you're going to burn the lake of fire and I will declare that forever. You're going to burn in hell. You're going to burn the lake of fire forever. But I got one more thing to say. I forever will sing praises to the God of Jacob. How's that? I'm going to heaven. You're going to hell. And while you're burning and paying for your sins, I am going to be praising God. Whoa. All right. Now, if Asaph is not the, the prophet of, of Psalm 74... He sure the prophets Psalm 75. Someone else went and said, Well, there's no prophets today. We got the complete Bible. So what do I do when I tell them if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hell? What is that? What if I tell them, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? Saved from what? Hell. Isn't that not prophecy? I don't know what that does for the Asaph of Psalm 74, but Asaph is a prophet. It might be the Asaph we're thinking of in Psalm 74. A very detailed prophecy. Very detailed prophecy. By the way, your God has to be the God of Jacob. It ain't the God of Ishmael. It ain't the God of the Pope or Mary. It ain't the God of Mary Baker Eddy. Or any other phonies. Balonies. 
all the horns, again, that's the strength in the Bible, of the wicked shall be cut off. No more use. If the horn of the animal has been cut off, the animal can't use it. And they say with these por poachers, which is a horrible thing, is when they take these horns and ivories of these animals, the animals just die. They'll find this complete dead animal and the horns have been sawed off. Sometimes with, with chainsaws, and that's horrible. But the animal can't use it no more. Now, I assume maybe some animals can grow it back. You ain't going to grow it back in hell. When God cuts it off. Well, you know, if God cuts off America, and he's going to, as he will with any nation but Israel. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you get, guns you get. I don't care what banner you fly. I don't care what papers you wear. When God cuts off America and England and Germany and all the nations, they'll be cut off and they're going to have no more strength anymore. Because there's no America. There's no England. There's no Germany. There's no China in heaven. There are only Christians Gentiles and Jewish people. The new Jerusalem, the new earth, and the new heavens. And it don't have America or England. But the horns of the righteous. So there's the horns of wickedness and there's the horns of the righteous. Shall be exalted. By who? By God, not us. And that's, that's not pride. God is not prideful. And God has no pride at all. Neither should we. Pride is a sin. You know what God's words are for pride is? Well done. God never says I'm proud of you. Find it. Chapter and verse. Book, chapter and verse, please. Find me the place where God says I'm proud of you, Jesus. P-R-O-U-D. P-R-O-U-D. P-R-I-D-E. L-O-F-T-Y. Find those words that God says it. God says it. He says, I'll cut off your pride. I'll put down the proud. He says, well done. He says, or you'll be exalted. A little higher. Now, it's not too high. Because no Christian will be exalted above the throne of God in, in New Jerusalem. Some Christians will get some cities in the millennium. Some won't. Oh, I'm, a, I, I'm in charge of ten cities. Yeah, but what apostles over you? See, there's going to be the people in the cities. There's going to be Christian in charge of the cities. Over the Christians is one of the apostles. Then over the apostles is Jesus Christ. Oh, wait a minute. Over the apostles is the Prince David. And then over David is Jesus Christ. And some of you thought, oh, I'll be exalted. You thought there your head got bigger than God, didn't it? And that's where you sin. So this is a wonderful hymn, a song, hymn, song, about giving thanks to God. The earth is going bye-bye. Our promotion comes from God. There's a good horn and there's a bad horn. And if the wicked man will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, he will pay and drink his own sin in hell in the lake of fire. 